Hey, what's going on? Coach Chris, Team Critical Bench. You might recognize this guy. He happened to just kind of find his way to our office today. This is Dr. Squat. Dr. Fred Hatfield, he, uh, he needed our, our uh, headquarters today to do a little filming of his own. And so we had to just jump at the opportunity to, you know, do something with you. Appreciate it. Talk to you for a few minutes. Yeah. Uh, we're talking off camera before we started uh, making a, to make this video. And we were talking just about random stuff. And it popped in my head, like, obviously he's known for his big squat back in the day. And it's been, now it's been, what, over 30 years? Close to that. Yeah, about 30 years. And if you're not, from, would you go back in time just a little bit and just share with somebody who's watching who might not be, and we could be talking to a 19-year-old kid right now who's not really familiar with you, but why should they be? What, what was it that made you such an elite squatter back in a, in a, in a time when a thousand pounds really wasn't wasn't the norm? Actually it's a very simple answer. It's called compensatory acceleration. As your leverage improves coming up out of the hole you, you could squat a house in this range of motion literally. So why slow down? You have to speed up. You compensate for improving the leverage by accelerating the bar. By practicing this kind of acceleration throughout the entire movement of the squat, I was getting literally three or four or even five times the amount of muscle fiber involvement really? as you ordinarily could get. Wow, that's pretty awesome. Now, I, obviously you're a younger guy at this time. Did you look at the, the exercise like you do now? Like, were in terms of you breaking it down, or have you come to learn a lot more about it as, as you've gotten older? There wasn't a day that went by that I didn't learn something new. Yeah. yeah. And right up until the time that I decided to hang up my jock, yeah. I was still getting stronger and stronger that, and stronger. That, that, that was, yeah. I, it, you know, and that's what's amazing about the human body, about you know, just guys in general. It seems like they... You would think that the guys would be peaking in their later 20s, but as you, as, as the, the, the sport of powerlifting and bodybuilding has progressed, it seems like guys older and older are getting better and better and stronger and stronger and maintaining that level I, I of strength. I was 47 when I hung up, and uh, I was getting stronger. I, I hadn't reached my peak. No not, not by a long shot. But the, uh, so you decided when you were when you hit forty seven, just for n n various reasons, it was just time to. I had stop other things I needed yeah. to do. Yeah. Other mountains to climb. Yeah. But uh, you know, I, I I figured all right. I, I actually I squat eleven hundred pounds, five hundred kilograms, and uh, it was time for me to quit. That's all. And that was at what weight? One hundred and fifty five pounds. Two hundred and fifty five pounds. Two, you were two fifty five. Yeah. Wow. So that was. Four, four times, better than four times your body oh, yeah. at the time, yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. What was your favorite lift? Now, it might not, maybe it wasn't the squat, or was it? Or a, ver a variation of, of one? Uh, it was, uh, I, never, I never even gave that uh, question any thought at all, because I did what I had to do. Yeah. And uh, whether I liked it or not, didn't, it no difference didn't, it didn't really matter. Yeah. Just do it. I guess because there's some guys that... I was that, good at squatting. Yeah. But I was also a pretty good bencher. Uh, you know, even despite having torn rotator cuffs yeah. on both shoulders, I still did 550 pounds. Oh, and uh, deadlifting, I was pretty good deadlifter. I deadlifted 825 pounds. Wow. See, I guess for me, the deadlift's my favorite. But right now, it's because it's what I'm best at. So, I, you know, I, I, you kind of always go towards like, well, what hurts the least? You know, what, what can I kind of really push myself max effort or near max effort and not feel like I'm, uh, you know, uh, I understand. Uh, my body's going to break. So, but uh, well, now, my advice to the kids out there, yes, learn please. compensatory acceleration, please. You're leaving way too much on the, on the, on the uh, platform unless you squat that way. And, and, and you were showing me pictures in the hallway like an hour ago of you doing some different physical feats. Yeah, I was a gymnast all through college. Right. And there's, a, there's pictures of him doing an iron cross. Well, you're actually in an L-sit iron yeah. cross. That's right. Which is pretty fantastic. And at the end of that, I pulled out. Really? Yeah. 
and then you were doing the, uh, the, the, the flag. Flag. And a true flag. I mean, your, bo your body was 90 degrees. 90 so. degrees. And you know, I used to uh, do the flag and then do chin-ups while in the flag position. That was insanity. And that, so then what, when was this? When was that when you were doing this? Was this back into the 60s? Uh, yeah, 60s. That's okay. when I went to college. Wow. That's amazing. So what made you go from kind of obviously being an elite athlete, gymnast, into, into weightlifting? Well, I was an Olympic weightlifter long before okay. I, I did anything. In fact, uh, I was teenage uh, Mr. Connecticut. I was a bodybuilder back in those days. That's why I also like him because I'm from Connecticut. So yeah. that's it. <laughs> and uh, and uh, I broke all of the Connecticut state records years ago in the press, snatch, and clean and jerk. Wow. And uh, when I got out of the Marine Corps, I just kept on going with my Olympic lifting and my gymnastics. And... Uh, but I got too old for that stuff, and, yeah. and you know, both. And so I said, all right, what, what can I do now? So I, by this time, powerlifting had just begun. Yeah. And so I said, I'll try powerlifting. Inside of a year, I was breaking world records. It's amazing. And and to to talk, I was already to, to, very strong. Yeah, well, I, indeed, obviously. <laughs> I, I can't do half that stuff. Uh, not, even, not even a tenth of it. See, but, you know, I hung out with half a dozen guys. Yeah. All of us did that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If any one of us ever got into CrossFit, we'd be the world champions. Yeah. Any one of those six guys that I hung out with. Yeah. Including myself. CrossFit is the stuff that we did then. Yeah, exactly. That's how you That's how you programmed your, your, your workouts yeah. and everything. It was go from this, go to that, do this. Yeah. Gymnastics. Putting it all together. That's all it is. I could walk up a flight of stairs on my hands. Stuff like that. Just nuts. Yeah, and was. what was your? Now, obviously, you were you were competing in powerlifting two fifty ish. But back when you were a gymnast, you were obviously significantly lighter. One hundred sixty five. I was going to say, yeah. So your but your strength to weight ratio was just off the charts. Yeah. And that's why guys like me, I'm two hundred twenty pounds. You know, I can do some body weight stuff okay, but I can't do it like the one hundred fifty pound guys can do it. I mean, they make pull ups look effortless. Well, you I know, don't have you know, I'm sure. It's un unbelievable. It's okay. To, to end this, to wrap this up, you've seen powerlifting go through a lot of changes oh, yeah. o o over the decades. Not good ones either. Not, and not good ones. So what, 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 are the, what are the two or three things that come to mind where you feel that it's, it's gone the, the wrong direction? It's the gear that they're using. That's all. Just the gear. Uh, you know, guys are uh, bragging about how much support they get from their clothing. And I didn't say to myself, I thought we were supposed to be bragging about our strength, physical, bodily strength, not the strength of my clothing. Yeah. It makes, it's, it's a circus sad show yeah. anymore. Yeah. It it's, breaks my heart, really. Yeah. Well, and no, then guys I, come up to me and say, I broke Hatfield's record. Yeah. And I said, no, you didn't. <laughs> Take off all of your oh, armor right. and then try to squat a thousand. That's Let's right. That. That's right. Well, that's the whole thing. And that, that's bled into all kinds of sports. It's the, it's the, the substance abuse in, in baseball, and you see the home record, uh, the home run records fall, and you see all right. I mean, it's it's all it's, for it's, bragging rights. Yeah, it's all for bragging rights, right? I mean, it's a shame. It's and it, and what's sad is these guys would all be tremendous lifters without all that stuff. Probably so. Probably so. Know, the numbers day, just wouldn't be guy, so inflated. The guys that I hung out with, we did that stuff for fun. Yeah, we loved it. It was part of our character. It was who we were. Yeah, it was a passion, a deep passion. I, I don't see that too much anymore. Once in a while. Uh, I'm hopeful that people watching this maybe will uh, think about it a little bit and maybe decide that, you know, maybe over gearing up too much is maybe they should be a little bit more proud of their raw lifts and stuff like Consider that. Consider that a challenge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. It was awesome hanging out with you and, and just getting to hear your perspective on things because you've been around the block a few times mm -hmm. in this world of uh, powerlifting and bodybuilding. So, Coach Chris, Team Critical Bench, hanging out with Dr. Squat. Really appreciate it. Just had to uh, get a few minutes with him. We'll see you soon.